Hello friends, in the previous video we solved a 2D steady state heat conduction problem without heat generation in Cartesian coordinates using finite difference method. In this problem we are going to add a heat generation term into our problem. Our domain is a copper plate 1 meter long and 1 meter in width. The temperatures at the four sides of the copper plate are fixed as shown here. T1 equals 100 degrees Celsius at the top side. T2 equals 200 degrees Celsius at the right hand side. T3 equals 300 degrees Celsius at the bottom side. And T4 equals 400 degrees Celsius at the left hand side. The heat generation term G equals 1800 183 followed by four zeros watts per meter cube. The thermal conductivity K equals 366 watts per meter Kelvin. The X and Y coordinates are shown on the left hand side. Going back to our general heat conduction equation in 3D Cartesian coordinates, we have dou square T by dou X square plus dou square T by dou Y square plus dou square t by dou z square plus g over k equals 1 over alpha times dou t over dou t. Here t is a function of x, y, z and time. Alpha is the material property called thermal diffusivity and is given in meter square per second. Alpha equals k over rho c where k is the thermal conductivity of the material in watts per meter kelvin Rho is the density of the material in kilograms per meter cube. C is the specific heat capacity of the material in joules per kilogram Kelvin. And G is the volumetric rate of internal heat generation in watts per meter cube. We assume the thermal conductivity is homogeneous and isotropic. And hence, the thermal conductivity K is uniform in the domain. For 2D steady state heat conduction with heat generation, Equation 1 reduces to a simpler form. Here we assume that the temperature does not vary significantly along the z direction when compared with x and y directions. Temperature is independent of time. That is, we assume a steady state condition. Accordingly, we get dou square t by dou x square plus dou square t by dou y square plus g over k equals 0 and t is a function of x and y. The boundary conditions are t at x comma y equals 0 equals t1, t at x equals m comma y equals t2, t at x comma y equals n equals t3, t at x equals 0 comma y equals t4. Here m is the length of the domain in x direction and n is the length of the domain in y direction. The above equation is called Poisson equation in two dimensions. To obtain the temperature profile, we need to solve the above PDE. We will utilize finite difference method to solve the above PDE. To do so, we need to replace the partial derivatives with finite difference approximations. We replace the space derivatives with second order center difference approximations. Accordingly, we get T i minus 1 comma j minus 2 times T i comma j plus T i plus 1 comma j by delta x square plus T i comma j minus 1 minus 2 times T i comma j plus T i comma j plus 1 by delta y square plus g over k equals 0. For simplicity, let delta x equals delta y. We then get T i minus 1 comma j plus t i plus 1 comma j minus 4 times t i comma j plus t i comma j minus 1 plus t i comma j plus 1 equals negative g over k times delta x square. Equation 3 is the finite difference approximation of the original equation we are trying to solve. Here i represents the node location along the x direction and j represents the node location along the y direction. 
the final difference in stencil is on the right hand side as shown now let us discretize the 2d domain into a 4x4 grid equally spaced as shown below We have 25 nodes in total. Temperatures are fixed in the border nodes as shown. Our interest is on the 9 interior nodes from 2,2 to 4,4. Let us apply equation 3 on the 9 interior nodes. Accordingly, we get T1,2 plus T3,2 minus 4 times T2,2 plus T2,1 plus T2,3 equals negative G over K times delta X square for the node I equals 2 comma J equals 2. Accordingly, we get similar equations for the other nodes. Boundary nodes have known temperatures and hence can be moved to the right hand side of the equations. The equations are rearranged as shown below. The above equation can again be rearranged in a matrix form. The matrix shown above is a pentadiagonal matrix. To solve the above set of equations, we can, we can use iterative methods such as Gauss-Seidel, successive over relaxation and so on. Substituting the values of the boundary conditions as well as the the source term or the heat generation terms into the above set of equations we get the following set of equations arranged again in a matrix form to obtain the temperature profile or the temperatures at the various interior nodes we need to solve the above equation we can solve the above equations using MATLAB and the graphical results are presented Using MATLAB or other software, we can develop codes for a general case where the number of grid spacings is say m by n. We can then change the number of grid, grid spacings as desired and obtain results accordingly. We now go to the MATLAB program. Here, the heat generation term is given as 183 followed by four zeros in watts per meter cube and the thermal conductivity K equals 366 watts per meter Kelvin. The length and the width of the plate is kept at 1 meter. The number of segments NX equals 4 along the X length and the number of segments along the Y length is the same. The temperatures at the sides are given as 100 degrees Celsius on the top, 200 degrees Celsius on the right hand side, 300 degrees Celsius on the bottom side and 400 degrees Celsius on the left hand side. We will now solve this problem in MATLAB. Here the matrix is the A matrix and is a pentadiagonal matrix and the right hand side vector called the B vector is shown here. By solving the above set of equations we get the temperature profile at the interior nodes as shown here. We will now look at the results graphically. The temperature profile is shown here. The temperature at the, the top side T1 is set at 100 degrees Celsius on the right hand side at 200 degrees Celsius and, and the bottom at the bottom at 300 degrees Celsius and at the left hand side at 400 degrees Celsius. And the temperatures at the interior nodes are shown here. The color scale is shown on the right hand side. In this case, because of the heat generation term, the temperature at the 
inside and at the interior nodes is higher than at the sides compared with our previous problem. We can now go back to MATLAB and rerun the program using a different number of segments. Say from 4, we can change the number of segments to 30 to get a smoother profile. Since in this case we have a number of nodes, it takes a little bit more time uh, for the program to run. Program is still running. Okay, we can now go back to our graphical presentation of the temperature profile. The temperature at the top side again is at 100 degrees Celsius, the right hand side at 200 degrees Celsius, the bottom at 300 degrees Celsius, and at the left hand side the temperature is 400 degrees Celsius. And the interior temperature profile is shown here. The temperature at the interior nodes is higher in this case compared with the previous case in which we didn't assume any heat generation term. The color scale is shown on the right hand side. We will now go back to our PowerPoint. To summarize, in this video, we presented a 2D steady state heat conduction problem with heat generation in Cartesian coordinates. Temperature at each of the four sides of the co copper plate is fixed and heat is generated within the domain. We solved the problem using finite difference method and obtained the temperature profile. We resolved the problem using smaller grid spacings and presented the results. In future videos, we can explore more challenging problems. If you have any questions or comments, please post it. Thanks for watching.